what I want you to think now is I have a, a cycle of some size. And this cycle is T. If T equals N, I am done. But I'm going to continue if T is less than N. So T being less than N says there are some vertices in my graph that are not on this cycle. Pick any one. So you write your program. Take the first one in your list, which isn't on this cycle. Here it is. There, there may be lots more. I don't care. Just grab any one. Grab the first one. What can you tell me about that vertex? It's got a lot of neighbors. How many neighbors? It has at least n over 2. How big is that cycle? It's bigger than n over 2. So this guy might have a lot of neighbors out here. But they're not all out here. There's not enough room. Pigeonhole alone says this vertex has a neighbor on this cycle somewhere. Now, do you see a path of size t plus 1? Well, answer yes. I just start here, go over to the cycle, and then go around the cycle to there. I have all the vertices on my cycle, and I have one more, the one that's not on. All right, now I open that path back up, and I try to extend it. I try to find neighbors of this guy or neighbors of this guy that aren't on this path. Because this guy might have more. See, the way I've drawn it, this guy has a neighbor here. Maybe this guy has another neighbor here, and maybe this guy has another neighbor. So I would quickly take my path of size t plus 1 and turn it into at least t plus 3 or t plus 4, or whatever it is. You're back in this idea of ex extend the path until, until you reach the point where the ends have all their neighbors on the path. Then you're back in phase 1. You use the pigeonhole principle and produce a cycle of that size. And if that cycle is not the whole graph, you're back in this phase. You pick any vertex not on the cycle. It's got to have a neighbor on the cycle, and that extends the path. Then you're back in phase one, and you greedily extend the path until you reach the point where all the neighbors of the two ends are back on the cycle, and that takes you back into phase two because you get a new value of i and i plus 1 that gives you a cycle of that same size. And in less than n over 2 loops, you have your Hamiltonian cycle in hand. That's quite a nice proof. I hope, I hope you have a feeling for that. That's, that's really a, a nice proof.